could indeed. You know, John Player became involved with the Tops, oh, it's over 30 years ago now, and they've been there ever since. OT Television, of course, involved as well. A great vehicle, a great night of fun, really is. I mean, the whole idea is whether you're a community group or whether you have the band of a major company behind you, it doesn't matter. You're out there and you're having fun. That's what it's all about. These people really had no experience um, on stage or dance. They had no experience, dance experience or singing or anything like that. And we started basically from scratch with these people. And uh, as you can see, it worked out really well in the end. They would come in every night, total dedication. Um, they rehearsed, they didn't mind putting in four or five hours a night. They were just so into it, you know, and um, that was unbelievable. The atmosphere in rehearsals, it was just great, it really was. Still now, I have lots of friends from Tops, even though it's finished, gone, I made a lot, had great crack, I really did. So, it's fun to take part, there's a buzz. If you're in a community group, well obviously you can bring a whole community together because you're rehearsing uh, quite a lot if you want to do well in the jump player tops because that's very important. And then if you're in a company, then you can bring all sections of a company together. Could be management, could be the guy who's making tea. They're together in making the show as best as it can possibly be. That's what it's all about. That's what being part of the jump player tops is all about. And of course, on the final night, the national final, a prestigious night, obviously particularly prestigious, when the President Mary Robinson is in attendance, handing out the prizes along with the Chairman and Chief Executive of John Player and Sons, Jerry Grogan. That's a good match. Now, not every team gets to the grand final. How could they? We'd have to spend months in the theatre if they did. That's not possible. But at provincial level, you can still have a lot of fun. See what I mean? We have great community spirit. Uh, a lot of the girls in the show are working in a local factory and they go back at night time and make all our costumes. Up a half tone, got a man to work for that, I'm a man to work for that. I'm a man to work for that, I'm a man to work for that. I'm a man to work for that. goodbye every morning before he goes to work. Why can't you do that? Sure, you only know the woman three weeks. <laughs> My late husband told me I was like a film star. I saw you are. Dracula. <laughs> wait now, wait now. That's gone far enough. I will not have you insult that lady before me. Oh God, I'm terrible, sir. That's all right then. <laughs> I didn't realise it was your turn. <laughs> As a newspaper editor, I realised the, the impact and uh, the potential readership market that was there from TOPS. We give TOPS extensive coverage, but so too with the rest of the regional press. Uh, we follow the shows, we give extensive picture coverage. And the interesting thing about the picture element is that with colour coming into the provincial press now, what better to photograph than the entertainers, the comedians, the showgirls, the TOPS, the chorus lines, they make excellent front page pictures. Uh, our coverage would extend, in the event of us getting to a national final, maybe over four pages. Here's two regular judges now. Let's find out exactly what they look for in a show. Well, first of all, as a TOPS adjudicator, you look for an entertaining show. And the second thing is you want a balance of music, comedy and dancing all put together with flair and imagination. That's the Council of Perfection, of course. Now, the thing about it is a real showstopper 
will we'll make you sit up and take interest. But I think the thing that pulls one show out of another in the end is an imaginative approach right through the whole show. Well, of course, the most important uh, ingredient of a top show is obviously its overall entertainment value. And I think this is made up of two parts. First of all, you must have well-chosen musical items presented with flair and performed with zest and personality. And then you must have a very good balance of comedy, well-produced and well-performed. Sometimes a group put an awful lot of time and care and attention and rehearsal time into a big show-stopping number. And they neglect maybe an item that involves just a couple of people. And I feel that you can't afford to have any item that isn't beautifully produced and beautifully performed. And of course, another very important element of a top show is variety. This calls for a diversity of items and contrasting items, all neatly put together in a well-arranged program. Well, pacing and lots of variety is very important, but there's a very elusive quality about the overall pacing of a show that people maybe sometimes don't get to grips with. It's not just simply a matter of following a fast number with a slow number. It's to get a variety in the pace of the whole show. I am always impressed by imagination, innovation and creativity, either in the selection of items or, of course, in the manner in which they are presented. And many times I have seen creative simplicity outmark uh, financial expenditure. On the technical side, two things come up time and time again. And the first one is the timing and the delivery of comedy lines. I think people have to learn to listen to and respond to audience reaction so that important punchlines don't get drowned out by audience laughter. If the judge doesn't hear the punchline, you lose marks. Beware of the tendency to concentrate almost exclusively on musical items to the detriment of the comedy items because comedy has become a very essential ingredient in tops shows and very often it is spoiled by careless production, inaudibility, lack of clarity, lack of projection and thus it affects the overall entertainment value of the show. I like to hear the words of a song and I feel that in most cases it should be the orchestra who is accompanying the singers and not the other way around as so often happens. Of course, by reaching the final, you get to meet all the stars on the night. And that, of course, adds a lot of glamour and glitz to the evening. And let's face it, the venue for the final is the place to be on the night. Competition like the John Player Tops really does require the support of the Chairman and Chief Executive of John Player, Jerry Grogan, but it also requires the involvement and the real support of Niall O'Flynn. He's the national organiser. Well, the competition is open basically to groups drawn from commercial firms and um, serves organisations, community groups and residents associations, organisations of that type. But the whole thrust of the rule is to facilitate entry rather than to prevent entry as long as the competition is fair, that's what we're at. And then the sort of people who can participate in a group are employees of the organisation, members of their families, and up to 40% of what we would call outsiders. So this makes it possible virtually for any company or organisation to put on a show and get the expertise that they don't have themselves in from outside and then orchestras, musicians, producers, all these can be from outside as well. Now, some of these shows are very spectacular. What about the cost involved? Well, I, I don't obviously know what individual shows cost because that's a matter for each team and the cost of a show is entirely at their own discretion. Some groups obviously spend more than others, but it's not necessary to spend a lot of money to be successful. And indeed, we've seen many, what we might call, small budget shows um, coming out on top against much higher budget shows. So it's not money, obviously, is a help, but it has to be used properly, and there's no substitute for creativity and inventiveness and imagination. And groups usually the way they fund their shows is usually um, by contributions and 
fundraising activities such as raffles and um, dances and cake sales and walks. And then the sponsors obviously put in a lot of money into the competition and every team that enters is guaranteed a minimum of £800 in prize money right along the line. And um, the actual area competitions on the national stages are all subsidised by the sponsors. She is handsome, she is pretty, she is a What's the next step? What do they do now? Well, the next step really for them is if there is a top centre in the locality and to get in touch with the local committee there and there's centres all over the country, it would probably be easier for them, in fact, maybe to contact me initially and I would certainly put them in touch with their local committee and I'd be quite happy to talk to them myself. And there's no commitment, because if you don't find out, you won't know whether you want to enter or not. So, thanks to Niall, and particularly thanks to John Blair for providing the platform for all his wonderful talent to perform over the years. So look, it's fun, it's huge on TV, and you can take part. Oh, and thank you for the music. <laughs> Thank you.